Hey, get into NHL playoff betting with Sports Interaction. We got the third round on the way, baby. We got Colorado. We got Edmonton. It's going to be an exciting one. And then we'll see what happens with New York and Carolina. But uh, either way, it's going to be an amazing uh, Western and Eastern Conference final. Before the game starts, live in and play. Or how your favorite player will perform doing it right since 1997. It's Sports Interaction and it's Canada's sports book. With the most competitive odds, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit. Easy to play and easy to cash out. Join now and see that all, all that sports betting has to offer. It's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. So uh, let's get into it. Was it a goal, guys? Edmonton and Colorado. Was it offside? Was it offside? Yeah. I guess that's not the right. Yeah. The, is that an offside or is that not an offside? Kale McCarr carrying the puck in. Valerie Natushkin trying to get back to tag up. And what they what happens is Jay Woodcroft, obviously Edmonton Oilers coach, challenges this, mm-hmm. and you don't blame him for challenging this because it looks offside, very so offside. That's the problem. <laughs> to me, that's the big problem here, uh, and to, to me, that's an easier problem to solve than the offside rule, because apparently that was fully within the rules, right? Right, because what they said, and, and I, I say just, apparently not tongue in cheek, like I learned something. What mm-hmm. they said was that. Um, that because McCarr never handled the puck after the blue line. Ridiculous. It's, that he it's, did not, quote, have possession of the puck. Ridiculous. Therefore, it's not offside. Technicality, right? Yes. And it, as if you're an it, Oilers fan, that probably drives you crazy because you know Kale McCarr's possession numbers and you know he always possesses the puck. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious. So they do keep track of uh, offensive zone time, right? And Colorado had a distinct advantage in that category uh does that count does that count towards the total <laughs> what I, i'm gonna get like towards the avs offensive that, zone that possession. 0. 0.5 seconds the, the 0.5 seconds <laughs> i i mean whatever it all counts man like okay it's 0.5 seconds and it seems little but like he had it or he didn't that's he has it he has it he's the only person who has any shot of getting that puck, it's right there. It's his. And like, he passed it to himself. Guys, it's, he has possession of the puck. The only thing I will listen to and give credit the NHL for is that they have set this precedent and that this exact play has happened several times. Didn't it right. happen a few years ago, Colorado Avalanche? Didn't it, it happen to the Avs? I are, think are you it was. About Matt Duchesne? Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't Duchesne. Was it Duchesne? No. It was... Uh, I guess we're talking about something different. And no, I think that the, the, it happened with the Arizona Coyotes, I know for sure. And it also happened, I have it up here, with uh, Charlie McAvoy and the uh, Bruins versus Canucks. It was, it's the exact same play where he comes in off sides. Uh, they deem that the little check forward of the puck it technically counts as a oh, dumping as a loose it, it, puck dumping it into the zone as a loose puck because you your deke you lose you lose the puck and you punch it forward and that he was uh on side what shot do you have so they they had they have set this precedent where they have called this exact same play before right i don't agree with the interpretation of the rule at all that's that's the thing that i think is the is the sticking point is oh, that's ridiculous that a little push forward of the puck in the deke is counted under the rule book as a, a drop of possession. I think if you do that, you still have possession. Yes. In the reality of the world that we live in, I don't see how you look at that play and say, Kale McCart didn't have possession of the puck. So every I think game, that's the reality that we should live in and not this r- stupid thing the NHL does where they slow it down to a fraction of a second. And they take it back. It's so stupid. Every game, both teams should have maximum one minute of puck possession then. Yeah. Because like how often is the puck actually on anybody's stick? When you're moving the puck with your stick, it's not directly on your stick at the exact moment. But when you slow it down frame by frame, it's not possession, on the stick. Possession it's is, it, it, it's, it's literally like, it's like a dog off leash, right? It's sometimes it's walking with you. Sometimes it's not. And, and I, that's how I look at puck possession is it's not, it's not direct control at all times. But if you're controlling the direction of the puck. Then, which Kale McCarr obviously was. Now, Jesse, do you mind hold, t- turning down my headphones? Sure. Just a little, just furthest to the left there. So, so here's, here's the issue I have. 
I've got the delayed offside rule in front of it here. Mm -hmm. So here's the, here's Maybe. the problem. If during the course of a delayed offside, any member of the attacking team touches the puck, attempts to gain possession of a loose puck, forces the defending puck carrier to further back down in his own zone, uh, or is about to make physical contact defending the puck carry lines, which will stop play. Now I'm assuming that that's if that's in, you know, after the blue line, right? Yeah. If during a delayed offside, an attacking player in the attacking zone elects to proceed to his player's bench, uh, he can be replaced by a teammate, blah, 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 blah. I, I just, if, you, if you're going to write it down in the rule, like, okay, if, if they're trying to attempt to gain possession, which is what clearly Kale McCarr is trying to yes. do, mm -hmm. even though, so even though it's not in that zone yet, Kale McCarr kicked it up to himself, right? To gain possession. Yes. He didn't kick it up to dump it in. He didn't kick it up to give it away. He kicked it up to gain possession. Attempt to gain possession is, for me, where this falls apart. There was a, a great conversation. It was like, if 90% of the people watching have no idea what's going on, you don't have a good rule. <laughs> That's interesting. You don't have a good rule. I was watching, and I'm like, well, this is, yeah, it's cut and dry. Nachushkin's still in the zone. Makar enters. There you go. And then they announce goal, and I'm just like, I, I have no idea what happened. And whenever, like, Frege has to get out the phone book size rule book and be like, so here's the actual rule. Like, guys, uh, are you interested at all, even in passing, of growing the sport? Like, holy shit. Holy actual shit. Why is this so hard? Mm -hmm. It's always so hard. And Oilers, I think, they, they do get jobbed here. And it might not even necessarily be on the interpretation of the rule because the, the way you put it, Jesse, at least they do have a relatively recent precedent that mm -hmm. this is how the rule is called. Okay, fine. Yeah. The penalty for a failed challenge <laughs> was put in place for coaches who were abusing the challenge system. Yeah. They were challenging every bloody goal for offside. They were challenging every bloody goal for goalie interference. They were challenging goals that had no shot of being overturned. They were, uh, I'm using that word very intentionally because that's what they were doing. They were abusing the system. Jay Woodcroft has a great point. Like that is absolutely, can, can we all agree as hockey fans? That was absolutely worth looking at. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why is he being punished for it? In, That's stupid. In the NFL, when you fail a challenge, you lose your challenge and you lose a timeout. In uh, the NBA, when you fail a challenge and you lose the challenge, you lose your challenge and you lose a timeout. In the NHL, you should lose a challenge and lose your timeout. Why must they go it used to, to be that extreme? Le yeah. Why did they? I think because then if you lost, if you if you had a challengeable play early in the game, you lost your timeout. Then you got another one. You couldn't challenge it. Didn't Edmonton yeah, that's, get that's a timeout anyway? What's that? <laughs> Didn't Edmonton have a timeout anyway in this game? I don't know. I, don't, I, don't I can't remember. No, but that's, a, that's how it's sure. You should lose your timeout, lose your challenge. Every other league has figured this out. Why did the NHL move away from that? It's it's a, it, like, let's say, let's say they got the rule right. This is how it should go. Fine. Great. I'll meet you there. The Oilers should not have had to kill a penalty. So no. it's a two-goal swing. There's no, this is ridiculous uh, penalty on top of using a challenge. The challenge is to correct the wrong thing the refs did. Like, why can't I check it out? That's not Jay Woodcroft abusing the system. That is a, a totally no, legit no. challenge. No, that's he the, shouldn't have been yeah. punished for it. It's I, silly. I, I loved, it's a uh, dumb rule. I gotta say, I loved his press conference afterwards. He's like, you know, sometimes like, he, he was like, I, he's like, I didn't see him lift his stick like intentionally to do this. Like yeah. he was talking about the spirit of the rule. And what I think is interesting, I want to, I want to bring up a couple of tweets that I'm just actually just were tweeted in the last 20 minutes. Ooh. Carlo Koliakovo, former player, now morning show host in Toronto, Ray Ferrero, obviously with TSN and I believe ESPN in the States or TNZ. One of the ESPN. two. Um, Both former players. Carlo Koliakovo said, I think rewriting or rewording the NHL rulebook should be a priority this offseason so the game of hockey can stop being so complicated for some, right? There's been enough controversy in these playoffs to warrant it. Time to get that right. Now, Ray Ferraro retweeted and quote tweeted and said, 100% agree, Carlo. I've said for a few years that rewording penalties and plays so everyone can understand them should be a priority. I suggested it and was told of its difficulty. And, and then Ray goes, who cares how hard it is? 
It should be done and will help the game uh, that's already better than it's ever been. What a pay, bunch of failures. Pay somebody to do it. Yeah, yeah like, like what, what, what was wrong bunch, with you? What a bunch of abject failures. Like, I'm not talking about Carlo Koliakovo and Ray Ferraro. You're not doing something that'll make your sport better because it's hard. You're a failure. Sarah Sivian. You're a failure. Sarah Sivian responded to that. And she said, I've asked a few people about this and they say it's about a five-year process to start rewriting the rule book. Okay, let's start today. Yeah, you'll be if five, it's a, five If it's a five-year process, why don't you just hire a bunch more people? Just hire 30 people to do it. Yeah. Do or, it. Or just rewrite individual rules. Like, you don't have the whole rule book at once. Too, like, many, too many people have had their gig for way too long. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Five I, years. I get think out of my face. We need to get to a point where if something is obvious to the naked eye, everybody sees something. You say, oh, look at this. Look at this play. Look at this video. This is offside. That's what needs to be the call. Not when we slow it down and you reinterpret the rules to this weird nonsense that you've come up with. Then you make a call based on that. It needs to be so obvious and clear to all of the hockey fans. I'm trying to figure out this. Mm -hmm. Why is it? Why is it that intent of a rule is so rarely looked at? Like they boil this shit down to like to the actual word. So let me let me mm -hmm. put this into context for you a little bit. You've been to a, you've seen a, a segment let's say you're watching TNT or ESPN or Sportsnet or TSN, whatever you're watching, right? And you've seen a really good segment. Let's, let's call it the TNT panel for basketball. Charles Barkley has a really good point, but you can bet that Charles Barkley is going to fuck up the grammar at some point throughout that segment, right? He's known for that. He's hilarious. And he mispronounces words all the time. Sure. But he still has a really good point. And you get the intent of what Charles Barkley's trying to say, right? <laughs> do we then, afterwards, as producers, do we then go in and say, Charles, listen, I think you would have had a good point there, but you mispronounced terrible and uh, you said this wrong and this wrong. So therefore, everybody lost the point. And what I'm saying is with the play in the NHL, when you watch the play at the speed it's supposed to be watched at, yeah. Yeah. not breaking it down word by word in that case or frame by frame in this case, you could clearly see what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why we need to break it. Like, listen, break it down frame by frame if you want to know if the entire puck crossed the line. I'm talking about entire puck crossing the goal line, by the way, not the blue line. Oh, okay. But offside, <laughs> oh, I was about to the offside thing, the other thing about <laughs> offsides too, and, and we haven't talked about this in a bit, but you know, you could play, play could go on for 45 more seconds and then a coach could challenge after a goal and have it called back. Like there has to be some sort of thing where you get it or you didn't. You, there, there, Adam, I'll, I'll take it a step further. There has to be incentive to cheer when your team scores. Yeah. To cheer when your team scores. Because that's, that's what was brutal is like, so I wasn't streaming those games. I, a couple of years ago when the offside reviews were rampant and the goalie interference, I stopped cheering after goals. Like in my house, I just, I stopped cheering after goals. Cause I, I don't know. I might be getting called back. Yeah. We saw in game seven. By the way, was that the first Wes McCauley game seven this playoffs where he didn't call back a goal that should have been a goal? Oh. Because he had the Toronto this, one. He's had like three. And then he had another one. Uh, but yeah, the, the Rangers Carolina one was, the, I think, the only one where he didn't call back a goal that was clearly a goal. That's kind of funny. He didn't do Coleman. Did he do Coleman? I don't think he... He, was, he did think another he did. one. I yeah, think he, it was McCauley and Furlat. Yeah. He Furlat called was the, the one who made the call. Yeah, yeah. That, that tandem is just... If that's the best they got, oh my God. It is. I, yeah. That's what they... Whenever you get Game 7 over and over again, that's the whole Angel Her Hernandez thing. I want to be able to do the World Series. They, in a court document, they're like, you can't because you're bad. <laughs> but he's protected by his union, so he still has a job. But there is a court document saying Angel Hernandez is bad as a job. Wow. He's just not good enough to do the World Series. He's also terrible. He's always <laughs> on scouting the umps. Um, I, so, so beyond all that, beyond the fact, so we're all in agreement, that probably should have been called back. It's a dumb been interpretation of a rule book. Okay. Like, that said. It should be a shame. Uh, Oilers score first. Um, mm -hmm. Also, just on the play, Darnell Nurse is biggest bailout ever in the history of time. What a bad play. There was 14, oh, seconds, yeah. oh, was 14 seconds left in the period, and he sends the puck kind of blindly off the boards right yeah. onto Kale McCarr's stick. You just tied it. You just, like, like yeah, dude, momentum murderer. Dude, like, yeah. you right now should be getting ripped to shreds if this play is clearly on sides. Oh. That was awful game, awful play. Oilers, Oilers fans are, yeah, he's had, he's well, had. Are Oilers fans time. even talking about that this morning, though? 
Uh, well, I mean, I think they're talking about the cores, McCargle. maybe, but like, no, he's Nurse had a bad game. Uh, no, people aren't too happy about his performance in these playoffs, and he's been getting some tough assignments and doing a little bit of sinking and swimming. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it is. It, that's a very good point, Jesse. Because in the moment, I was like, "Oh, what a dumb play!" But then the review sort of yeah wrecked it all. I do remember, however, in real time, being like, "I'm fairly certain that's offside." Oh yeah, I, I, I didn't say it out loud because things were happening so fast. But I'm like, there's no way Nachushkin cleared the zone, and turns out he didn't. But it also turns out he didn't have to. <laughs> so I don't know. It's a very silly sport, and I don't get it. And uh, the problem is no one gets it. Right. Yeah. So darn yeah. on there should be ashamed of. Himself. And yeah, that was that was a bad play. <laughs> I mean, holy shit! I mean, the Oilers are so fun. 